Welcome back to Bits of an Artist Life. This is Sandy. I'm a professional artist and on this channel you get to see all things about a living, living, a real artist. So the good, the bad, the process, the art supplies, all the things. What I want to do in this video though is something a little different than what I usually do. I want to share a process that I've been sharing over on Instagram. I've been getting a ton of response, a ton of questions. I've been hearing from you guys how encouraging it's been. And a lot of you requested me to do a YouTube video on it. So that's what I'm here to do, a video on two different ways that I work. One of them I recommend for new beginners or somebody just getting back into it. And one of them I do not. So I shared over a, a couple days, maybe even more like a week, I can't remember now. I took a painting that I did from some sketches on location at a creek. So it was a creek and some trees. And I had de decided for myself that I was going to work on this painting and keep changing it and changing it until I was completely either bored of it or really happy with it. And it went through a lot of processes. And some of those stages, you guys loved and I got in trouble for changing them. This is a new subject for me, the landscape. And so I'm exploring, I'm figuring out my language, how I want to say things. I just determined I was going to keep painting over this painting until I liked it. So there were some large areas that I just completely wiped out that you guys were like, no, we loved that. And I was like, sorry. I mean, I like it, but I don't love it. And I just want to keep pushing it because one of the things that does is makes the surface of the painting just wonderful, but it also makes you get over the preciousness of things. I had also recently done a online class from, I think it was Simon Carter, and he does this process a lot. So I thought, I'm gonna give it a go. It's just a piece of paper. It's just one painting. No big deal, I'm gonna do it. And so that's what I committed to. I do paint over things often in my paintings when I know they're not working or when I just kind of think, Mm, I think I could push this. One of the things that I wanted to share and that I did share over on my Instagram stories, in fact, I saved all of that in my highlights. And if I have that process still saved those clips, I'm going to put those in now so you can kind of get an idea of what I was talking about. I just got set up to paint. So here's my setup. I've got a painting in progress there. I've got sketches on the wall from going to the creek. I've got only one color sketch from the creek and I did it very abstract. I was just trying to capture movement and color. Right now what I'm about to do, I did this and now I'm gonna take a whole different sketch. I think I'm gonna take this one and I'm going to paint over this. Just a line drawing and start painting. Now using this, a whole different sketch from this. Oh, I forgot to show you this. I have another one that I also started under here that I'm gonna do the same thing to. It's basically just a method to be able to get going, get some paint down, and get something on the surface. And I have all these sketches now to use. I do wish I had more color um, notes, but I don't. I need to go back there. I'm gonna go back probably this weekend and get some more just thoughts on color. But now you can see I'm starting to sketch over this and it will just give me another layer to start working and to play around and see which one of these compositions I like. And then when I go back and get more color notes, I can come back and just do these. And these are just on paper and it's just a way for me to start figuring out how I want to say a landscape. Okay, and so here's where we are. It is totally different now. And I'm just trying to get things simplified. But what happens is, See, a lot of the underpainting will still be saved, and there's a lot coming through. I just want to not worry about saving stuff. I want to explore and just play and see what happens. Kind of, I've done the sky multiple times. It was coming way down here, and I just want to feel my way through it and learn. I keep forgetting to pick up the camera, but this painting that I showed y'all maybe I started it yesterday, I can't remember, <clears throat> it's gone through 50 million revisions. And I keep forgetting to pick up the camera. I wanted to document it for you guys, but I forgot. But let me show you where it is now. 
It's nowhere near done. These trees have gone through so many different colors. The water down here has gone through multiple different levels. Uh, yeah, just a lot to it. And many times I felt like giving up on it because it just wasn't working. Not saying that it's working right now, but there are things about it that I love. I'm loving all of this pattern back here and the colors. And I'm at this point playing around with the trees being different colors and seeing how I can get movement. I'm not sure how much this is going to show up because it's quite dark outside. But this is where I'm leaving it for the night. I needed to stop, but I'm starting to add some different colors to the trees and then I'm going to start adding more pattern. It needs something probably here. Yeah, I don't know. Or who knows, I may get bored and leave it as is. I started over. I decided to just wipe everything out and I'll show you what I did today to help me start afresh. I realized I didn't have enough information about the trees that I was putting into these paintings. So I started making up the trees and I realized they were all kind of not looking very interesting at all. It was super yucky out yesterday. It was raining and snowing and just gross. So what I did, I took some paper and my charcoal and I just went around to the house to different windows looking out at trees. And I wanna tell you the best way to do trees or floral, anything like that. You're gonna take your paper and some charcoal or whatever you like to sketch with and you're just going to look at the tree. Don't look down. Just look at the tree. Follow it. Let your hand follow as your eyes follow the limbs. And you may think, oh, well, the limbs may not even be touching the trunk. Yes. Perfect. Look how much more interesting you get trees. So then what I did, I took these and did the same thing with my painting. I was just looking at these and painting. I wasn't looking at the painting. And then I got even more interesting marks. So let me show you that. I did wipe out the painting that you guys were kind of upset with me about. Sorry about that. Hope, hopefully you'll like it better. It's not done, but let me show it to you. Here are all my very interesting trees. I'm telling you, if you are trying to look at your paper and look at the subject, you're not gonna get the interesting trees like this. I don't recommend that process though for a newbie or somebody who is just maybe getting started or getting back started. The reason is this, I know my visual language. I know what I like and what I don't like. I know when something's working or when it's not working. I know my style. I have practiced for years now, not being precious about things and really just enjoying the process. So if that is not you, I would not be painting over things and over. What I would recommend that you do though is this. Take either a subject or even maybe an old painting or sketch that you like, that you're like, there are things in this really working, or maybe even one that's like amazing. Paint it again. Take just even scrap paper. You can even take just copier paper. You can gesso it, or even the first layers of acrylic will gesso it, kind of prime it. But you may work in watercolor or color pencils. It really does not matter the medium but take that painting or that sketch and do another one. And don't try to just copy it, but play a little bit. Maybe one area is really good, but this other area you feel like it could be improved on. Okay, we'll work on that. But, but work on it on another sketch or painting with looseness, with opened hands and Think of it more like, I'm gonna try this and this one, knowing that you're going to do several more. So that way you are freed up, you can play, and then do another one. And change things up, push things a little. And with each one, you get freer and freer with it because you're seeing that you're progressing, or let's say you're not. Let's say by the third or fourth one, you're still like, I'm just doing the exact same thing. I'm not loosening up at all. We'll do another couple, and then at some point you're gonna be like, I'm tired of doing this, I wanna play, and then you'll be at the play stage and the not pressure stage. But keep doing several and just explore with it. Go into it with the mentality of, I'm gonna try this. So let's say you're doing the, the sketch or the painting, and you think, hmm wonder what, well just do it. Knowing that you can do another one and then you have all these references 
to go back and you've saved, you've kind of documented this process and this progress. That's how I have been painting for years. It really frees me up. It's very exciting because I'm able to just play and explore and then I have this all this reference material to then maybe make a final bigger real painting for possibly selling. Even though I still do that even in real paintings, I kind of know like mm, I just feel like my gut says this isn't gonna this isn't working or sometimes I just think what the heck I'm gonna just try it and I just do it. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't but it's just paint, it's just paper, it's just canvas. We're meant to be having fun. I hear from so many of you guys and you're getting stuck because there's this preciousness and I get it. I get it. I've been there. I've done that. I know how that feels. And so many of you guys are like, you're so brave. And I'm like, well, maybe, but it's really, um, practice bravery. Like I've been doing this for so long and I so long to just enjoy the process and not get caught up in, Oh, is this going to be the painting that makes me famous? Or is this going to sell? Or what will people like? I mean, I just say no, no, no to all of those things and want to just enjoy the goopy paint going across the page. I want to enjoy the exploration of it, of could I make this better if I do this? One of the questions I got was this, do you get frustrated on this process? What do you do when it feels overwhelming with tackling things? Let me answer the first part of that first. Sorry, I keep looking at the screen because I just answered these and not record any of it. So let's try again. Maybe I won't get off on so many tangents. I got off on some long tangents. All right, so do I get frustrated on this process? I don't. I find it very exciting. In fact, when I finish a process like this, like I've just been working on two paintings and when I got to the end of them, I was like, oh, I don't have anything else going. I have to start a new one. It's almost like I finished this adventure and I don't know. I've got to figure out what my next adventure is going to be. So I really enjoy it. I do get frustrated sometimes when I'm working on a painting like this one. I was painting some trees and I was hearing from my Instagram audience. They were loving them and they were fun. They were yellow and but I knew that that was not how I wanted to say trees for the future. So I also realized I was making up trees. I didn't have a lot of notes, like sketch notes from when I was there actually on location. At that time that I was on location, I was mainly just sketching and painting the water. And so then I was just making up the trees and the painting. I knew that just wasn't going well. Sometimes it can get frustrating when I don't take time to go get more notes and observe and learn my subject a little bit better. I had a little bit of a, a session in that painting where I just kept painting the trees, making them up and changing them, making them different colors, adding more branches. And they just kind of basically kept looking the same. So I did that like maybe three times and it was like, okay, something's not working here. And then I realized what, what was wrong. So I do get frustrated, but not to the point I think frustration just makes me kind of rise to the occasion. I work very hard to enjoy the process. I have worked hard for years to enjoy the paint. and the, So it's not hard for me to get out of any kind of frustration or negativity that I have. I really, really enjoy painting and the adventure and the journey is part of it. And so it's not usually very frustrating. It's more of a, when I'm done, I'm usually kind of like, well, and then I have to like rise to the occasion to start another one. The other part of that question was, what do you do when it feels overwhelming to tackle things? It just doesn't feel overwhelming. It feels very exciting. I think that's the difference in professional artists. Well, I don't know. I know a lot of professional artists too that are very negative and feel like it's always a struggle. And I'm like, what? We're artists. Like this is the best job ever. How can, how can it feel? Yeah. Anyways, that's just, that's not me. I enjoy painting so much. I have to keep looking at the questions when I over, when I feels overwhelmed. Okay. With tackling things, the tackling things does not feel overwhelming. It feels usually quite exciting. The only time for me it gets a little tense is when a painting, it's all going really well, except for just a few small things. 
but they're key things and it feels like I could ruin the painting. And I do have to work on some mental attitude on that of just kind of like, hey, even if you plop the strawberry in or whatever it is and mess it up, you can remember all the other times you've painted over and fixed it. And the fixes never look like big fixes. All they do is add more character to the painting. So I just have to kind of have a little self-talk and remind myself of that. Like, you're not gonna ruin it. You can always paint over it. I just really think it's important to enjoy the process, enjoy the journey. I feel like that's more important than a good painting result because you can always like have a one-off, you know what I mean? And I think that's what happens with beginners or people that have returned to painting from, you know, maybe they did it forever ago, but they're now returning. It can kind of feel like, oh, here's one. And you feel like you're gonna lose it or can't do it again. The way real good paintings continually come is just by doing it and doing it and doing it. So if you just set a practice for yourself of like, okay, I'm gonna tackle this subject and take time to go get notes, to go observe some more and just sketch or do blind contour. Get all the notes and enjoy getting all the notes together, gathering all the information and then you can have all that laid out and then you've got information, you've had practice, you've had exploring time, and then you feel so much more ready to actually do something completed. And I think it does take time to then maybe, maybe you're like, okay, I've done that. But then when it comes down to doing a real painting or the finished thing, then I'm feeling, well, that takes practice too, to just be like, hey, it's just paint. I can paint over it. I do also want to acknowledge the fact that art supplies are not cheap. I hear you. If you are finding yourself feeling very because like, oh, I'd like to do that, Sandy, but paint is expensive or these color pencils or whatever you're feeling that, like I don't want to waste stuff, which you're never wasting it because all of that practice and bad work always goes into the good. That is my, I mean, anything good that you make is built up on all the bad that you've done. But what you may need to do is scale down with supplies. Maybe you need to go get just hobby craft paint and paint. It will be harder to paint because that's gonna create muck and it won't translate as well when you then go to paint in your more expensive paint. That's one of the problems I do see with new artists, people just getting into it. You feel very precious about the supplies too I think the fact that I don't have a very good memory helps me forget how expensive the paint is. Uh, and it is my job. I do get paid. I get paid for selling paintings. I get paid on YouTube. So this is my profession, so I get that. I don't really know how to overcome that. It's just part of it. Is the, the fact that you probably aren't even using some of your applies, supplies because you're afraid of like them running out or they're so precious and they were so expensive, I mean, those things are meant to be used. So if you could get cheaper paint that's still decent and play with that, then maybe that's what you should do. And maybe that's what you should actually be painting your final paintings with. You can get cheap paint and it still be archival enough. After saying that, I could not not jump on here and mention some cheap products. I have a whole video that I'll link here on cheap paper which I think is important to have because you can paint on it. You can even paint on it with oil paint if you gesso it. If you're painting with acrylic, you don't even have to gesso it. I never prepare it, I just jump right in. I mean, sometimes I prepare it, but I usually don't. But let me mention a couple cheaper paints that I've been using a lot and I'm loving. One is the Liquitex Basics and the other is the De La Roni System 3. Both of these are inexpensive. They're inexpensive like right off the bat, but the other reason they're really, really inexpensive is because they're quite thick. And I personally think with acrylics that they need to be watered down quite a bit. They just um, don't look so plasticky. Both of these are also more satin to matte. They are really great and they're very pigmented. So you can water them down and get them down to more of like a heavy cream or half and half and are still quite pigmented. So I recommend both of these paints. I'm starting to buy more and more of those. And then brushes. Guys, the cheaper the brush, the better to me. I've recently found, and I'm going to be showing in a future art supply this, but I cannot not mention it here. The Blick Economy Bristle. I'm really enjoying it. 
the negative to me sharing these things is then y'all go out and buy them and then I can't get them, but I did just recently stock up. Then I think another really, really great brush are that are very, very cheap are Chinese calligraphy brushes. I think the white hair instead of the brown hair is better. They're a little stiffer. You can get these for really cheap. And I find that the cheaper that they are, like the really, really cheap ones are really good. You can find expensive ones too, but I don't really see a difference in them. Actually, have I even? I don't even think I've bought the expensive ones because I love the cheap ones so much. Some of my very favorite brushes that I can't even find anymore were in big packs for like kids that have stiff bristles that fall out and I think they're great. You do not have to buy expensive supplies. Use what you have and maybe even dip into your kids' supplies. Crayons are even great. So kids' supplies have a lot of great stuff too. Okay, I just wanted to mention that. I hope that's helpful. All of these products will be listed below too so you can have a quick link to them. Okay, let's get back to the video. I mean, I'm thinking of people like Maude Lewis. She used um, like, what's, uh, what's that paint call that you paint your boats with? Like boat paint? <laughs> I feel like there's a professional word for that. She used sardine cans as her palettes and plenty of artists have used not the best archival material and you're probably not at a place anyways where you're like really need it to be archival. That's part of that thought is all into that thought of like famous artist that's in the back of your mind. Go watch my video on, I think it's something like how to loosen up your art. I'll put a thing here that uh, you can go watch but that voice is always back there, man. You need to like stab that voice and it needs to go because that will trip you up every time. There's plenty of artists that have painted on cardboard. Maybe if you're, you know, you're like, oh, I don't have good paper, go get cheap kilts. That would be like your gesso. Gesso up some cardboard, some copier paper, and just go to town. Go to town and just enjoy it, people. Can we not just enjoy it? It's just such a great gift, and I don't know why we have all the blobbity blob that trips us up. But I feel like I've been yapping for too long now. I hope some of this was informative and helpful, and if not, maybe it helped you go to sleep tonight. I don't know. Anyways, let me know if you have any more questions, if I need to do a part two on this, if there's things that you're like, well, we need to know more. Well, I'll probably have more to say because this is a topic I'm pretty passionate about. Anyways, make sure to go follow me on Instagram because I post almost daily on stories and those only stay up for 24 hours and they're basically like little bitty mini blogs. I feel like it's my audience that I can just get on and blabity blab this kind of stuff to you and show, I show a lot more paintings there and process and stuff because it's just way more casual. It's not edited. I just pick up the phone. I usually look like a hot mess, all of that kind of stuff. All the good stuff's there. So make sure you're following me over there. Okay, let's call this a wrap, people, because who knows? Have I been talking for like an hour? I don't even know. And I'm sure my battery's about to be dead. My battery's like, hello, you've gone on too long. So I've started a new painting, and this is kind of one of those processes, one of the two processes that I told you about. This is the one where I'm going to just paint and paint and paint over it. It's a big canvas. I'm taking a similar composition that I've painted some other paintings in, and right now I'm not real happy with it, so I'm just capturing it for you guys and showing you the changes like this. Now we have blue trees. I'm just kind of wanting to play a little bit. There's some things I like about it, some things I don't. And I also just know that this is a stage where I can build up the surface some. So here's where I am in the stage of this painting. You may think, yes, it's looking wonderful. I feel like it's at a great stage too, but probably not for the same reasons you do. I feel like I've just kind of played, put paint on, tried this, tried that, and I've gotten a really bad painting going. There's just, yeah. I mean, there's, well, I don't know if there's anything I like about it. Basically, I'm not sure any of it, but I took it from a stage that felt, eh, this is okay, but realizing that I wanted to go looser, and now I've messed it up so bad that I can just continue to play. So that's what I'm gonna do. I just have decided on this one, I'm gonna keep pushing and pushing and pushing and just let paint really build up. So we'll see what happens. I'll keep you informed. Look at me remembering along the way to pick up the camera. All right, so I decided to see what the trees would be like if I lightened them. I may like that one. I don't know if I'm not liking this one because it's pink or because it's too light. So I think I'm gonna make it dark again, knowing I can always lighten it again.
that's part of all this. needed to go. I needed to start over. Okay, I got rid of a few things or a couple things. I just, yeah, I needed to get rid of some things and start over. So now I'm going to go with a really big brush. I mean, that guy's probably going to go too, but right now he's behaving enough that I left him. Um, yeah. Oh, look, everything's like melting down the page now too, but that's totally fine. That'll just add to the character. Good morning. It is Wednesday morning and I'm fired up about getting to this painting this morning. Here's why, because last night, I definitely took it to a spot where it is in bad shape. And it was fun to like go to sleep thinking about it, thinking about it this morning. I really like it when it's at a place where like there's nothing really that I like. And I'm at a place where it's like I'm about to just completely destroy it. It really, 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 really feels exciting for me. I think because I've done it so many times now, um, it just feels exciting. So here's the deal. I realized I've lost all luminosity. This painting that I have over here on my back wall, I'll show it to you in just a minute. It has luminosity about it. And the way I'm able to capture that is through transparent paint. On this painting back here, everything's just gotten really matte and dense and heavy. There's nothing that breathes. And I'm realizing more and more as I'm doing landscapes that I like things to breathe. Well, even in my still lifes, I'll have areas that are transparent paint, which kind of allows them not to just be like a wall. There's something luminous about it. You can see through it and it just kind of adds a little to a painting. I don't really know why, but it just does. And I'm realizing that I like that combination of transparency and opaque. So I'm also getting a little over this composition. I'm thinking about, I keep looking at my pond painting over here and thinking that it could be a neat snow painting. So I think I'm going to just completely paint over this and start anew and try this pond painting in the same style that I've done over here and then put snow on it. Now that's the plan, but as we use, as we know that usually like things get averted and go a different path, which I'm totally fine with. But I just feel really excited. Oh, it's really a fun place when you just realize it's paint and to play and be fine with messing a painting up. It just feels really freeing. And I think as artists, it's what we should do. I also have, let me grab this, this painting out because I really like the way I did the trees in this painting. I feel like this says how I want to do landscapes a little more. I actually am also going to blop in a moon up at the top of this painting. I can tell it needs it. But there is something about this that I really like. So I'm going to keep that out for inspiration. And I'm just going to, the first thing is to obliterate this. So let's go do it. And I'm sorry for those of y'all that are saying, no, please, we loved it. I'm sorry. The first thing I'm going to do is mix a nice cream color to just paint over the entire surface. The best cream I feel like you get, which I worked for years to figure out a good cream, is first to just take your white and a little bit of, the Liquitex calls it yellow oxide, but raw sienna. I keep a little note in my oil painting drawer because I always forget which kind of ochre color it is. Raw sienna plus white makes the warmest white you can get. So I'm gonna, and basically what I was saying is the yellow oxide in the Liquitex is raw sienna. I don't want it crazy warm. I just want it to not be pure white because pure white would just look like toothpaste. And I also added a little water. 
because I do want it to be thin. Anytime you're adding water to some paint like this, you want to just do it a little bit at a time and get it mixed in. It will mix easier and you'll also have an, a good idea of the consistency or a better idea of the consistency. Okay, I'm going to go with that. I think that looks really good, nice and warm. And I'm going to paint over the entire painting with this just to get some white back. Okay, I can tell that that's not thin enough. It needs more water. Whoa, oh my gosh, I just splashed it out all over the place. So let's just put it on there. Wow, I don't know how I did that. There's some major professional mess going on. <laughs> oh no, and then I just knocked the cup over. Holy smoke, there is paint everywhere. Wow, okay. Hmm. I'm just gonna wipe it up from the table and put it on here. Wow, it's everywhere. Yowzers, jeez. Okay, I'm just gonna pick it up from the desk. I mean, my I'm covered. <laughs> Almost like it never even happened. <laughs> okay, to me that feels much, much, much more doable. And that just feels fresh. <laughs> that makes me so much more excited. And it's not wasted. I think that's what people feel like. Oh no, you're wasting, but it's not. Look at all the colors shining through and yeah, and then I'm building up the surface too. Okay, now I feel like I can work. Look at me being the good YouTuber, remembering to pick up the camera mid painting session. Uh, here's where I am. I'm slopping on color and I'm using this large painting that's not finished as my inspiration. There's still work to be done on this and I just, I don't know why, I just don't get to it. Who knows, it may end up just being this. But I've been painting this to go over our fireplace and instead here it is. But it's being inspiration for me right now for this i do want this to be a winter scene so i'm just playing with color trying to figure out my color palette and i really am just trying to get paint and color on there and then i can start chipping away yay don't you think this is already going better maybe all right here's where i am i thought i would put the snow on top and then keep working into it but i don't know i feel like it could be done i did go ahead and sign it i always try to do that when I'm getting close to the end because then I have like paint that is on the brush or I still have like paint that kind of goes with the painting. So um, I'm happy with it. I'm gonna go put this up on the wall someplace because it looks really fun. I kept getting rid of this part of the blue. There's part of it I like because it kind of mimics that, um, balances that, not mimics, balances, but I'm still not 100% sure. So I think I just need to step away from it for a little bit and see what I think, but I'm pretty happy with it. And so there's the snow one, and then there's that one. I think doing that snow painting will help me finish this now because it informed some stuff that I need to do. Okay, my guess is that some of y'all are like, but I hope you're like, yes, that was better, Sandy. I don't know. I'm happier with it. And at the end of the day, I need to be happy with it. And as I'm figuring out how I want to say landscape, this is more it. Like I do want there to be some represent representation. So basically that you know that it's a tree and probably a pond and a dock, but I barely want you to know it. And I want to play more with color and abstraction. I want there to be like a, a joyfulness to it too. So I want to be able to get away from real life colors and I think with both of these I did that I'm happy with it yeah. so we'll see I'm gonna put this up on the wall for a little bit live with it and see how I feel about it tomorrow I need to go wash my hands before I'm 
touching my face. So um, you can leave me all your comments about we liked it better before, and that's okay. I hear you. Art is so subjective. Is that the word? You know, everybody likes different things, so I understand. I understand, and I feel you. But it is kind of fun to see, like, where it came from and being brave and now getting to just explore. I don't know. It just is really wonderful. And then the surface gets better and better and better to paint onto. So much better. Okay, I'm going to clean up and go have lunch. And that'll be nice because then I'll step away from this and come back and see this. I may come back and be like, hmm. Or I might be like, yes. I don't know. I thought I was done with this painting. I've been kind of living with it. I've been putting it up in different places around the house to see how I feel about it because it just felt like something was off. And I just put it in my den on a wall that was way back. So I was able to get really far back from it and immediately I saw the issue. So I'm about to hopefully fix that without ruining the whole painting. Okay, what I saw was the problem is right here. So this tree is further back and I've got its branches going over this one. I mean, this is kind of abstract, so that probably doesn't matter, but I'm wondering if that's what's been bothering me. So I'm going to bring this tree back to being able to be forward because that pushes it back and brings this one forward, and that's a little wonky and weird, so I'm gonna fix that, and hopefully it'll be perfect. So here's the finished painting. I'm thrilled with it. I added more detail to the dock so it looked more like a dock and not like a horse. I've heard people say, oh, it looks like an animal on the pond. And I also added more detail to the trees and to the area around the pond. And I just feel like it's really joyful snow scene and I'm just really happy with it. Hope you like it too. So here's the finished painting and I am absolutely thrilled with it. I love the texture in the painting. The surface has just a beautiful, beautiful quality about it. I added a little moon there and I got such wonderful effects with the trees and all the movement and then the water there. Yeah, I'm just thrilled with it. I am so happy I just pushed and pushed with it because it turned out so, so good. Here's uh, another one I did. Actually, I've done a whole series of trees and creek from the beginning, from you know this starting off. I'm not gonna show all of them here, but I did wanna show just this one because it can give you an idea of what I've been doing and how I've been taking things to a different level. So using the tree shapes and I'm just taking different compositions from those early sketches and playing with composition and color and shape, different things with the water. And I'm just having a lot of fun with it. This is definitely one of my favorites of all of them. Here's another one I did from a little bit different viewpoint of the creek, but still using those same sketches that I did before and playing with color and the tree pattern. And I pushed this one a good bit too, so that there's a lot of nice texture on the paper. All these were done on paper. I don't know if I mentioned that or not. But I really loved this one too. A lot of fun and again you can see how just a few simple sketches and painting over and over and over for the scene there's things like there was this log going across the creek that i captured in several of these and this one down here you can see it right there but this is where it was from my like i was literally sitting here and it was down that way so and enters the dog coop you just can't handle it can you when i'm filming 
Oh boy. Okay, go lay down. I am sitting here editing the video and I use the term professional artist in this video, which I have done in several other videos. And I always get a couple comments that are a little rougher. One person is a follower that has been following me for a while and she just shared her heart one time and was like, I know you, you're not trying to make me feel less than, but this is just how that kind of phrase makes me feel. So I've been a little surprised at how like that term makes people feel. And I started to edit it out and I thought, no, I'm not going to edit it out. I'm just going to say something about it here. And I don't know, maybe in the future I'll be a little more careful, but I just don't feel like I should have to be careful. So I've had people say, what makes you a professional artist? A couple of people have had like list things. What, did you go to art school? Did Is it just something you feel like, woof, 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 you want to say kind of thing? Like that's been some of the kind of comments and I find it really interesting. I always just respond to people like this. No, none of those things. It's just how I make my profession. It's how I make my money is being an artist. So another way to say it would just be I'm a full-time artist, but a professional artist just means the same thing. So I think if I said it this way, you'd be like, oh yeah. If somebody said to you, I'm a professional athlete, you would get it. You would you understand that there are athletes who are really good and are really good at their sport and what they do. And so that doesn't mean they're less of an athlete, but just the word professional athlete means that they make money doing that. So it's like, it's their job. So there should not be anything that like negative feeling about that. If you're like, well, I'm not a professional artist. I would talk to a friend of mine who's an artist and I was like, do you know what the deal is with this? Why people like this ruffles people's feathers? And she didn't know, but she did say, maybe it makes it come across as though you're saying I'm a pro, like I know more than you. And I was like, okay, I get that. But I also don't get because the fact that like in other areas where people say I'm a professional athlete, people get that. So I just thought I'd jump on here to say that. And I may have to stop using that phrase if it, or that term, if it does make people feel bad, because that's the last thing that I want is to make anybody feel bad. I mean, I was a hobbyist artist for forever. And I think sometimes people feel like that's demeaning too. And I'm like, but nobody feels demeaned when they say, like if somebody said, I'm a hobbyist gardener, like you can still be an amazing gardener and it's something you put your passion into. So anyways, I just have found through this channel that Grady's building some canvases for me in the other room. If you hear the drill, or he's working hard for me. So, yeah, I really hate that there's some negative or that people feel negative with some terms like hobbyist or feel put down if they're not a professional artist. I hate that and I don't want that. That is not my heart. And if I need to start being more careful, I will. I just don't think it's called for, to be honest. I think there's just, there are people that make their living doing certain things. And just because you don't make your living doing that or maybe zero money, that's, doesn't mean you're that you have less skills. There are people who do art that have much better skills than I do that aren't maybe making the money that I am. So anyways, I just wanted to say all that. Please still be nice to me <laughs> and I hope you're enjoying the channel. I'm going to get back to editing now. I just wanted to say that. just wanted to clear all that up. Thank you. Y'all are always nice to me though. There's just occasionally, you know, okay. So but thank you. I'm going to go. Okay. I feel awkward now. That's it for this week. I hope it was encouraging and inspiring, guys. That's what I want to just be a help to you guys in that way. I'll see you back here next week. <laughs>